Hi there, welcome to The Factor. Joining me today is Captain Gerald Gavaya. We know him better as Jerry. And there's so many titles I can introduce Jerry by. And if I'm to call those titles, I think the hour will run up on me. Run up on me. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule to pop in here in The Factor. But I look at so many titles here. You're, you're in the tourism industry, a hotelier, you're in the private sector, and there's so many other things that you would have done in the past and you're still doing many of them. Let's start somewhere. I'm going to start about asking you about the private sector. How important is the private sector to a country like Guyana? Um, it's absolutely very, very important to have a mobilized private sector. It's okay to have private sectors, but to have a private sector that is mobilized and, and coordinated and working in good partnership with the decision makers and the other stakeholders, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, for me, when I got into the leadership of the private sector back in 1996 as the president of the Tourism Association, the private sector at that time spent a lot of, every day they were fighting with government um, on one issue to the next. They were not seeing eye to eye. Um, and whether it was the Manufacturing um, and Services Association, whether it was the Chamber of Commerce, um, you had a constant battle going on in the public. So private sector organizations at the time were being judged by how the, the level of your hostility was, was somehow going to determine the, the, the level of your effectiveness. And I never believed in that. And so um, we started to mobilize the private sector. So the point is how important private sector is. It is how, how well coordinated the private sector is and mobilized it is to work with decision makers, not in a, in a hostile manner, but in a constructive engagement to bring results to the table. And Let that's why we need to judge the private sector. Is the Ghana private sector mobilized, effective, in your estimation? I will answer this by saying, by an answer by saying this to you, that I am actually very, very proud of being a member of the private sector, knowing where we came from to where we are today. The private sector today is a phenomenal example to the rest of the Caribbean um, in terms of our mobilization, in terms of our structures. You understand the private sector commission is really just an umbrella body of all the other private sector organizations. So you have all of the subsector organizations in the private sector, whether it's tourism association, whether it is manufacturing, chamber of commerce, fisheries, mining, all of those organizations sit in the private sector commission so that at the level of tourism, they have issues, they will deal with the Minister of Tourism. If you have mining issues, the mining association will deal with the Minister of Natural Resources. The private sector commission deals with the president. Private sector commission deal with national issues, whether it's security issues, governance issues, trade issues. Private sector commission sits there. And today, the private sector commission is well organized and well, um, I believe, entrenched and embedded in, in the development of Ghana today. Uh, we came from a time when we were sitting in the, it used to be them and us. And what we have done, I believe, is developed a relationship that is unprecedented in the Caribbean where we don't have to posture publicly and hostile to the government because we have access to the decision makers where we go and we sit and discuss issues to bring the results to the table. So, so you think then that the organization, the private sector commission has been given due recognition? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you have private sector leaders now that are embedded in all, all kinds of boards. I'm the chairman of the sentence management board of the Ghana Prison Service. So I am there now as a private sector person with other stakeholders um, looking at how, um, and you, you would wonder why would private sector be interested in that? Mm -hmm. We are involved in all kinds of things. We're involved in the University of Ghana, we're involved in uh, the, the chairman of the airport authority board is a private sector leader. And so over the years, you develop the level of trust and responsibility. Um, and so now, even though government may not always take your, uh, your, your advice or, or, or take your, your opinion on board, at least they're hearing you and you're hearing them. I want to ask you this, and um, how, how do you react to the impression or the perception by some that the private sector body is a set of guys who are elite, considered the elite in the country, and probably very friendly with those in authority? I will answer you by saying this to you. In the political arena, opposition political parties are interested in getting into government. And so for them, 
and this is from my perspective, my personal perspective, for them, they want to highlight all negatives in the country because if they highlight the positives, it makes the government look good. And for political parties who want to get into power, that is not a good thing. Their, their main task is to make the government look bad. And in making the government look bad, they sometimes lose sight that they're making the country look bad. And um, the private sector, on the other hand, it would be foolhardy for me um, to continuously stand on a platform and pronounce on all the negatives when there's so many positives happening in the country. And positive attitude, positive thought, positive behavior breeds positiveness. And so for the private sector, we are, um, if there are things bothering us, we will deal with it. But we have been dealing with the positives in our, in our country. The government as well would want to deal with the positives. Now, they will certainly be dealing with the negatives, but they will be dealing with the negatives. So if you look at that equation, you will see where the private sector, and whichever government in power, whichever government is in power, will have synergies, because both of them will be looking at what is positive. And people will very well see that, and mistake that to mean that the private sector is somehow in bed and, and is subservient to government. And in fact, that is not the case. What, is in, what happens is that you have, you have vested interest in the development of Guyana in a positive light. Now, the negatives, while the negatives may be there, the negatives are not um, things that we want to um, um, display and wash our, our dirty linen in public to, to, to scare the investors. I want to say this to you. And the reason for that is, what is the number one priority in Guyana? The number one priority in Guyana for every single leader in this country must be the creation of jobs, must be the creation of proper paying jobs, must be the creation of not only proper paying jobs, but it must be the creation of proper paying jobs that allow Guyanese to do that job with prestige and dignity and pride so that we can have our people walk with, pr they must be proud. To do that, to do that, you have to, there's only one way you could create these jobs, invest the confidence. You've got to have investor confidence. Government don't create jobs. Private sector, investor confidence is what creates jobs. How do you create investor confidence? You've got to have a society where you have respect for law and order. You've got to have a society that, um, where, that is stable. You've got to have a society where people, things like property rights are respected. You've got to have um, where, people, where the society is stable and secure. So the point I'm making to you, any person any person across the divide that contributes to propelling and perpetuating negativity in Guyana um, in any kind of mass scale is in fact hurting the very people that these leaders are, 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 are um, saying they want to help. Because oh, if, if you, here. hold on, if you, if you do anything to, to, to disturb the peace, the tranquility, the security, the disrespect for law and order, you are in fact affecting investor confidence and affecting the creation of jobs. All right, I think you're, you're alluding most recently, and we, no, no, we, no, no, we have seen, no, no, mm. what I'm going to say, we, mm. I was going to say there were some examples of that recently, what happened unfortunately in, mm. in the mining town. But going back to what you said in your opening statement that the private sector commission is there to work with the decision makers. Yes. In, a, in that context then, given what we have seen over the years, these negative things that you, you spoke about and the, the, these things that will serve to erode confidence from in potential investors, do you talk to those people in the opposition? All or the those time. who are trying to um, create a negative impression? Well, I'm not only talking about the people in the opposition because I find, I find people outside of politics. You know, when you, a lot of people don't, do not know, they, haven't, they, they were not taking time to read, they were not taking time to understand where the country came from to where we are today. And there's a lot of negativity based on ignorance, ignorance of lack of knowledge. And sometimes people just like to, to spread rumors. And you have people, for example, who take, who take this position that the economic development that is happening in Guyana today, every time you see a, a building going up or somebody driving a nice car or something, it's drugs, it's money laundering. And then they say that, this, that the economic development of Guyana is particularly premised on drugs and money laundering. Now that is by far not true. You listen to the IDB, you listen to the, to the IMF, and we meet with those people all the time. So we know what is happening with information, authentic information is coming from the IDB and the IMF and the World Bank and so on and Guyana. So that, but people who don't know, then spread all of this misinformation and damage the image of Guyana, which 
uh, which again, if it gets into the, if it gets into the, on the internet, it, uh, investor confidence could be affected, and then you're affecting the creation of jobs. How challenging is it then for you, the, for the private sector commission, to help to mitigate those circumstances? The private sector, I think, has been able to uh, insert itself in the process because we in the private sector understand very clearly that if we were supposed to mine our own business, if I was supposed to look after the business of Arima Airways alone, and I did not care what happens around me in this country, I'd be foolhardy. If I have 200 employees, those employees got children, got to go to school, they got to go to church, they got to live. If I don't help contribute to making Guyana a better place, to making Guyana a productive place, a, a developing place, then what is going to happen to my employees? Where, where, what is going to happen to their children? What is going to happen to their psyche when they're working? So that the private sector, I believe, has been inserting itself out, if, out, of, the, out of the notion that if we all try to contribute to make Guyana a better place, all of us will benefit. So that you have private sector leaders who have been contributing 50, 60 percent of their times away from their companies, contributing to, the, uh, to this process. So we have been, for example, meeting. We meet with the unions, we meet with the political parties, and we share our thoughts with them, and they share their thoughts with us, and we, as much as we possibly could, try to influence the process. Are you satisfied? with those efforts, that the efforts are bearing fruit to the extent that you feel that it's okay or there's much more to be done? I think it's a, it's a, it's a dynamic process. I think it's a work in progress. Um, I will say to you that um, we have developed a very good working relationship with the, with the government, with the, with the current government, it, to, the, to the extent that if there are issues facing the private sector, facing our members, um, across the board, we are able to intervene and deal with it and bring results to the table. We have been meeting with the opposition as well, um, and we have been letting them know our views. And, they're, they're, and, 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 and a lot of times, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a discussion, and we, we will listen to people, they will hear our views, um, but it's a dynamic and continuous process. All right, you spoke about negative influence, negative impressions, and it's not only just coming from one particular sector. No. We have seen some sections of the media that have been going along that road. But of, of course, they say it's freedom of expression. And they have the right to express themselves, even if it means putting the negative stories on the front page. This has been attracting a lot of debate over the years. What is your take on that? The only way you could hope to influence the media is by moral suasion. I am a firm believer in the fundamental principles of democracy, fundamental principles of human rights, fundamental principles of freedom of speech and freedom of the media. Very, very strong. Um, and we, I will not at all ever condone censorship of the media. I believe what I want to do through moral suasion is talk about sensibility by the media. Now, one time I remember I spoke to an editor for one of the newspapers, one of the owners in fact, and I said, why are you doing this? Um, and she said to me, Jerry, listen, you need to fill your hotel rooms, and you need to fill your plane seats, and I need to sell my newspapers. You do what you got to do, and I will do what I have to do. I have to sell my newspapers. And if it means I have to sensationalize because I have competition that is doing it, I will do it. And I said to her, I said, you will sell those papers even if it means that you are damaging the country's image, even if it means that you are damaging the creation of jobs in Guyana. So you're telling me that I will fill my hotel rooms and fill my planes with, with, with at, 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 at any cost, I would not do that. I don't want to, I don't want to develop a Rima area as a consequence to my, uh, to my country. Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to use the newspapers to damage the image of our country? No. But again, it comes down to moral suasion. That's all you could do. You could only hope. But that, that could take a long time. And, and again, I want to repeat what I said. And I'm asking you this question in the context that you are, in the, you are integrally involved in the tourism sector. People will say, well, that's freedom of expression. Is, I'm going to do what I have to do. I don't care about whatever, what you think, you know, what Jerry is saying. I don't care about what Jerry is saying. I have my job to do, and I'm, I'm going to put the negative news on the front page. Is moral suasion actually going to work? I'm hoping so, because, you know, it comes down in the final analysis to each one of us. Each Guyanese citizen comes down to each one of us individually, how we live our life our commitment to our country, the way we respect our national anthem, the way we respect our pledge and our flag, and the way we respect what we need to do in Guyana
to make the country a better place. You know, we have 750,000 Guyanese still here. There are many, many Guyanese that went off to different countries uh, for different reasons. And I don't envy them and I wish them well. The point is that there are many people who are here and if we need to create jobs for them and make a life a better place for them, we cannot do it with negativity. We cannot do it just by folk, every one of us, no, nobody, no country, no country in this world got only positive news. And if your newspapers concentrate only in the positive news, then maybe you have an agenda. All right. Do you, do you believe, before we go to a break, do you believe that because, unfortunately, in Guyana and in many countries, as a matter of fact, you have political allegiance by media houses to political parties. Do you believe that that plays a big factor, given what you said earlier, that those who are out of government will see their role as trying to bring the government down through negative influences, create negative impressions because they want to get in? Do you think that's a big factor, the political allegiance by some media houses? You know, sadly, I think so. Sad, I think so, but then it, it, it's, still, it's still their right to choose which political side of the divide they want to, and, and it is still their right how they want to do their business. Um, and the, like I said, the only recourse we have is moral suasion, to plead with people to see, see the bigger picture, see what you're doing to the people who need jobs, see what you're doing. You know, you say that um, people are, we don't have enough jobs in Guyana. They have all these children coming out of school. See what you're doing to, to that possibility. If we keep, every day, you, you click on the newspapers and the internet at 2 o'clock in the morning, and all you're seeing is all the negative, gory details of Guyana, and you're not, you're not in any shape or form helping to promote the positives of the country, and you figure that maybe if you do this, then somehow it will, it will put the government in bad light and maybe help bring down the government. If that is your objective, then it's a terrible objective because you're hurting the whole country, you're hurting even the people, even the people who may be supportive of, of, of people that you support. And I think we need to have more macro thinking, more people with a, with a deeper level of patriotism to what is good for Guyana. And, and, and sadly, I think, um, I think we, are not, we are not seeing that to the extent I would like to see. I think you preempted me a bit there because I was going to say, given all of what you've said in context of moral suasion, if political allegiance is the factor, then it's going to be very difficult for moral suasion to work, given, given No, but the I think the political leaders themselves, I think political leaders themselves must also, the, the, the ambition or the, the objective of achieving power must not be at the, at the consequence of the country. It must not be to the expense of destroying the country and hoping that well, if we get into power, then we build it back. All right, on that note, we'll take a short break. When I come back, I'm going to ask Mr. Govaya about his thoughts on the controversy that is surrounding the expansion of the tourism sector, specifically to do with a brand name hotel that is expected to come to Ghana very soon. Stay tuned.